Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with Maths and Stats uh, and in this video, another video on our series of videos dealing with calculus and limits uh, and in particular epsilon delta proofs, uh, we want to show using the definition, using the epsilon delta definition of a limit, uh, we want to show that the limit of 2x as x tends to 7 is in fact equal to 14. So let's just recall this epsilon delta definition of a limit. So let's just recall something. So what we have is this, is that given a function, given a function, given a function f, okay, well then f approaches, approaches uh, the limit, the limit l, okay, near a, near a, if, if, if for each and every epsilon, if for each and every epsilon greater than zero, okay, uh, there exists a delta greater than zero, okay, such that, okay, for each and every x satisfying the condition, okay, that zero is less than x minus a, okay, which is less than delta. So for each and every x that satisfies this condition, that this must imply that the function evaluated at x, f of x minus l minus its limit must be less than epsilon. So effectively, the definition of a limit says this, is that uh, if someone chooses a bound around the limit, any epsilon greater than zero, then we need to find a delta, we need to find some number greater than zero such that uh, the absolute value of x minus a minus, minus where the x is tending to, okay, uh, that that absolute value that uh, for all x within that particular region, okay, that's less than delta. That this implies that f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So in this particular case, in this case, okay, uh, what we need is this: is that if we're given if we're given an epsilon greater than zero, okay, we need to find a delta greater than zero, such that, okay, for each and every x satisfying okay you now so we're dealing with with this particular limit here okay satisfying zero is less than the absolute value of x minus where is x tending to x is tending to seven minus seven must be less than the delta that we found okay and that that has to imply that the function f of x which is 2x minus its limit minus 14 has to be less than epsilon Okay. So the goal here initially okay, is for us, to keep, keep in mind that this is an implication here. Okay. This is an implication. Okay. So this is an implication. It has a premise okay, and it has a conclusion. Okay. So what we need to show is this. Let's say for argument's sake that we knew what this delta was that goes along with this epsilon. Okay, so someone gives us the epsilon greater than zero. We immediately know what the delta is. Well, then what we need to show is this, is that for all x that satisfies this condition here, that we can deduce this particular condition over here. We can deduce this conclusion. So given, let's say we know the delta, uh, well, then what we have is this premise. And from this premise and the delta that we're given, uh, the delta that we found, we need to be able to arrive at this particular conclusion. So how the hell are we going to do this? Well, actually, what we're going to do, first of all, is this, is that we know that whatever happens here in our deduction, okay, uh, that what we need to deduce is we need to deduce this particular fact here. We need to be able to infer this particular fact here. Okay. Yeah, 2x minus 14 is less than epsilon. So let's have a look at 2x minus 14. So let's first of all look at the con conclusion. So let's consider the conclusion and let's see what that says about this particular fact here, okay, about x minus a, x minus 7. So let's see what this says. So we're really going to try to, we're really going to try to, let's say, reduce this conclusion uh, into something, into an in, into a, an inequality, okay, uh, that has an x minus seven in it. Okay, so let's take this conclusion. So let's consider the conclusion, okay, the conclusion which is f of x minus l is less than epsilon. And in this case, we're considering two x minus fourteen, 
absolute value of 2x minus 14 has to be less than epsilon. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to try to, let's say, manipulate this around using our typical uh, typical algebra here to try to find x minus 7. Okay? And you can probably, it's probably pretty clear there's a common 2 across both of these.